This is Mark with a C at Nerdapalooza. Hello. 2013. Um, hi, Mark. Uh, hi there. Tell me, uh, how, how'd you get into the uh, the music game? Well, um, I've been playing guitar and writing songs since I was around 12 or 13. I don't think I got good at it till around 1999. I didn't know I was good at it, though. Um, I, I literally had to go on stage when um, a, a band that was headlining, their, uh, their lead singer and guitarist, just wasn't there yet. And they were literally looking for anyone to entertain the crowd. And uh, they said, can anyone here play guitar? And I'm like, I kind of mess around with it. And uh, I got up and just sang some TV theme songs and some songs that I'd been making up that I didn't think were very good. And the next day, my phone rang a lot, and uh, it, somehow it caught on. And there was a market for, you know, just the, the sort of songs that you make up to amuse yourself while you do the dishes. Um, uh, songs about either things you're passionate about or things you hate. But I, I found that for me, I, I, I felt the best writing songs when I'm able to be really direct and just not drip things in poetry and like, look at this great pentameter. Um, when I I can just say, hey, you know what, nerdy girls are hot, then, you know, I feel a little more, I guess, uh, comfortable being uh, direct. Cool. Um, now, what inspired you, how, what inspired you to get into guitar, get into music? Seeing The Who on TV when I was five years old. Oh, yeah? I saw Pete Townsend uh, play guitar, you know, with, with The Who, um, it was uh, the 1982 tour. Um, I, I saw it on a repeat. I think my, my parents were watching a VHS tape. And uh, when you're a kid and you watch a band that's full of energy, you see the front man and you assume he's the guy doing all the work. And I was like, I want to be that guy. And I pointed to the, the screen and my mom goes, yeah, but he just shows up and sings. That guy over there playing the guitar, that's Pete Townsend. He writes all these songs. I'm like, wait, you can do that and not get all... Blew my mind, but either way, seeing Pete Townsend on TV when I was uh, around five or six years old, mm -hmm. I made the decision then. That's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And my bank account is sometimes mad at me for making that decision, but wow. uh, personally, I'm very satisfied doing it. Cool. So then, who, the Who's a, a big inspiration to you? Who, who else? Uh, what other bands? Oh, the, the Who's a big deal to me. Uh, they might be Giants, who's mm -hmm. playing here tonight. Big mm -hmm. fan of them. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, lately, I've been really into a Brian Eno record. We talked about that off camera. You folks at home, <laughs> right. unfortunately, you missed that one. Um, my record collection literally takes up a third of my house. Wow. Um, and it's it's not a small house, <laughs> not a mansion or anything, but it's there's a lot of records in there, and I like everything from ABBA, mm -hmm. really into Swedish pop, to uh, bands from Canada like Sloan, um, Japanese groups like Shonen Knife. Yeah. Anything that has a way with melody and is a little off the beaten path, mm -hmm. that's that's what really sings to me. That's cool. Actually, I love a lot of those bands that you mentioned, especially Shonen Knife. I don't know if they're still around anymore, though. But... No, Shonen Knife is still a different lineup. Oh, really? Shonen Knife still kicking it out. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Cool. Um, all right, and uh, where'd you get your start uh, as far as as far as playing gigs? Um, uh, the lead singer and uh, guitarist of a group did not show up. I was working for the group at the mm -hmm. time. I was uh, their that sort of their roadie, their merch guy, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a room full of like 200 people. Mm -hmm. And the band was called Precious. Lots of people wanted to be entertained, and he uh, just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And they needed time filled, so I got up and went, I can kind of play. It's like, what's your name? And I said, Mark. And they wrote down Mark. I'm like, no, Mark with a C. And they went, great. So they wrote down Mark with a C. I said, ladies and gentlemen, Mark with a C. And I went, that's pretty good. And that's how everything started, that one fateful night. So then I guess uh, you didn't have to go through too many names for your for your group or for your solo, you just had your name right there. I was in a, another band uh, before that, mm -hmm. uh, a, a terrible teenage garage band, mm -hmm. but we, we literally changed our name. I think we went through seven names mm -hmm. in around four years, and what we couldn't ever get around was that I wasn't a very good songwriter <laughs> then, so we uh, every time we'd, we'd can all the songs that I'd written, hoping this time I'd written a crop that would do better, we came up with another name. Uh, to, to mask who we used to be and we went through names that I, I don't know that I will even mention here in this interview because I don't want people finding the, those <laughs> tracks that we were really I was an awful front man and we were not a good band <laughs> wow um, 
All right, and uh, about your songs, the music, like, uh, tell me some, what inspires you? Is it uh, video games, TV shows? Well, a lot of my songs are about being in love with music in general. For example, uh, a record I put out earlier this year called Popular Music, mm -hmm. this is uh, actually just a big love letter to writing songs at all. There's uh, tracks like... I've got the proper amount of snare in my headphones now. It's about being in love with the whole process. But other than that, um, I've written love letters via song to Laura Preppen, uh, the beautiful redhead from that 70s show. Um, and recently, I'm in another group called Clear in the Potatoes, and a lot of the songs that I've written for that band secretly are actually Mad Men fan fiction. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm heavily inspired by television shows um, and applying the lessons learned in an episode to my everyday life and then sort of bastardizing and exaggerating that into music. Awesome. And now, um, as far as uh, as far as gigs, do you, uh, you play more in Orlando, or do you have you gone? Have you done any kind of tours, or have you? Um, there've been sporadic out of state shows, but it's uh, next to impossible to leave the state of Florida because well, there's so much mileage to even get out of it. And uh, I love playing the song Nerdy Girls, and I would love to go play Nerdy Girls in Poughkeepsie, but I don't want to sleep on a cat pee infested floor to do it. And uh, even though you might travel a long distance to do a job and entertain people, oftentimes those that are putting on those shows don't really afford the performers the same respect that they would the other vendors right. um, monetarily. So I go to the shows that I won't screw up my back to sleep on a ground uh, you know to sleep on the floor mm -hmm. but uh, I can't afford to tour massively right. so I, I leave occasionally to do a token show but touring just you don't have to do it anymore with the right. internet it's nice and I want to come and sing for everyone but I'd also be homeless and you know my daughter has this awful habit of eating and I have to <laughs> facilitate have to, have to give her food huh yeah. uh, that food I tried to break her of it she wasn't having it man she, <laughs> she screamed loud yeah, that happens. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, who, who else have you played with? Who? What, what other bands, like, uh, when you play shows, have you, uh, any, any um, what other bands have you played with? Well, over the last 13 or so years, since I started in, like, December 99, I, I couldn't really list all of them, but uh, some of my recent favorites, well, you know, today I get to play with They Might Be Giants, and that's a huge deal for me. The Proto Men, who just played here, are some of the, the most amazing live performers around um, a lot of nerd music groups, definably nerd music like Cy Fried, MC Run A Lot, um, MC Lars, who's playing here tomorrow, MC Chris I'd played with in the past, and also uh, two years ago, Big Dream came true. I got to play with the Dead Milk Men at the Athens Pop Fest, and uh, the Throwing News has played there, um, Bob Mould from Whisker Dew and Sugar. Right. So um, it, it's really neat when I get to go into the quote unquote real music world and still feel a little bit of validation like, no, we get what you're doing, and right. thanks for coming. Um, but those, those were some of the ones that meant the most to me, but I'm, I'm just, I'm so in love with music in general that I almost stop differentiating between the person I'm talking to at the merch table and the person on the stage. Oh, wow. Cool. Um, so, when you're not doing music, do you have any hobbies or any, what do you do when you're not music? Just music. That's it, yeah. Uh, besides being Mark of the Sea and being in my other group, Claire and the Potatoes, um, I'm also the general manager for a 24-7 online nerdy music radio station called Nerdy.fm. Um, we play many of the groups that you might see here at Nerdapalooza. Uh, and uh, beyond that, I host a show called The Real Congregation for the Nerdy Show Network, and that's just a, a every two-week show about me literally going through my record collection and going, what the hell is this? And, you know, we drop the needle and we find out together. Uh, I do a lot of stuff, and it's all music. That's it, from the moment I get up to the moment I go to bed. That's great. Cool. All right, well... Um, it's been a pleasure. It's oh, thanks so much. Cool interview, and uh, thanks. You have uh, any last words? Um, eat your veggies. It's important. I didn't find that out till way later. And look at me now. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, man.